Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the Gloom Spike Gits for Warcry. If you're looking for a quirky, fun warband, then the Gloom Spike Gits will be perfect for you, with a great range of miniatures from the smaller, uh, sneaky snufflers and the stabbers to the cave squigs and the rock gut trogoths these are a perfect warband for something a little bit more fun and a little bit out of the ordinary in this deep dive video and also part two of the gloom spike gits deep dive we'll take a look at all the miniatures available on the games workshop website we'll look at their fighter cards and their abilities for warcry and see how we can put them together to form an awesome warband in this video, we'll be using the Harbingers of Destruction and we'll go through all the fighter types and the leaders looking at their fighter abilities and their leader abilities. We'll take the fighter cards from this book and work through all the stats. And this is a great book to get some background and some kind of history of the Gloom Spike Gits and to kind of give us a, a little flavour of what they're doing in the eight points and how they fit in to the world of Warcry. So this is a great place to start. And then in part two of this deep dive, we'll be looking at the Tome of Champions 2020 and 2019 as well so we can really look at some interesting characters that we can bring in some bigger fighters like the rock gut trogoths and even the uh, goba palooza and different fighters like that which can really make for some unique and interesting warbands right let's get started but before we look at the miniatures the fighter cards and abilities let's have a real quick look at the reasons why the gloom spike gits are in the eight points the Gloom Spike Gits of the Eight Points know that they are in hostile territory and their sneaky scraps only venture forth from their cavernous lairs when they believe they have good cause. Of course, what a grot considers to be good cause, which includes, but is not limited to, stealing bottles to fill with potent fungal brews, tracking down the boss's lost squig before he returns from a raid and being convinced to follow a particularly deranged shaman would boggle the minds of most rational surface dwellers. The grots don't give the strangeness of their deeds a second thought, however, and they relish any opportunity to vent their malicious cruelty on the isolated warbands that they encounter out amidst the wastes. A real fun introduction to this awesome warband, so now let's get started looking at the cards and abilities, starting with the leaders. And every Gloom Spike Gits leader is going to have the Gloom Spike Gits room mark and the leadership room mark. And that's going to be able to entitle them to use the triple ability called Stab em Good. Until the end of the battle round, add one to the attacks characteristics of attack actions that have a range characteristic of three or less made by friendly fighters while they are within six inches of this fighter. This is a really great ability to kick things off with and this really kind of gives you an idea of how much the leader empowers all the fighters around him and you know as long as they're within six inches of this fighter that's going to really give them some extra attacks there you can have one to the attacks characteristic of attack actions with a range characteristic of three or less and that's until the end of the battle round so that's going to be for both attack actions during the activation our leaders can also use the Gloom Spike Gits fighter abilities and any fighter or leader with the Gloom Spike Gits room mark can use both the double backstabbing mob and the quad sneaky stab and the double backstabbing mob, a fighter, can use this ability only if there is a visible friendly fighter within one inch of them. Until the end of this fighter's activation, add one to the attacks and strength characteristics of attack actions made by this fighter that have a range characteristic of three or less. So this is another little sneakily good ability here. And if there's a visible friendly fighter within one inch of them, then they can add one to both their attack and strength characteristic of attack actions made by this fighter that have a range characteristic of three or less. And so that doesn't say just for the next um, action, it's for the whole activation. So this is a really good ability and I think for a double this is really strong and once you start using this when you've got some of the more high powered fighters on your warband this is going to do some serious damage for sure. And the next fighter ability is the quad called Sneaky Stab. This fighter makes a bonus move action then they can make a bonus attack action. In addition if the fighter targeted by that attack action is within one inch of this fighter add the value of this ability 
to the damage points allocated by hits and critical hits from that attack action. So for a quad, this is great. Not only can they make a bonus move and bonus attack action, if that fighter targeted is within one inch of them, then they can add the value of the ability to damage points by hits and critical hits. So this is only for one attack action during that activation. But if you're rolling high with a five or six uh, ability value, then you can do some serious damage again with this. So I think all around the leader ability and the double and quad fighter abilities for the gloom spec gets a really good and get a great framework to build your war band around so that leader ability is going to be for all the leaders and these fighter abilities are going to be for all the fighters and all the leaders now let's get started with our first leader and this one is the loon boss on a giant cave squig an awesome looking miniature and this one's coming at 275 points it's got the leader rune mark it's got the rune mark that tells us that he can fly and he's also got one other rune mark for an ability we haven't seen yet he's got a movement of eight toughness five and can take 26 wounds and his weapon here he's got this kind of spear and this is a weapon range of two making four attacks strength five dealing two to five on a crit so all round pretty good stats there but it's this ability we haven't seen yet so let's take a look at the ability for the loom boss on the giant cave squig and we already know he's got the triple stab him good and he's got the backstabbing mob and sneaky stab but now he's got this extra triple called boing 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 until the end of this fighter's activation the next time this fighter finishes a move action within one inch of an enemy fighter pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter then allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability so that's really great so until the end of the activation the next time this fighter finishes a move within one inch of an enemy fighter they can simply allocate a number of damage points equal to the value of the ability so again we want a high value ability here four fives or sixes you know that's going to do some some great damage for free and then of course they can do their usual attack actions on top of that so nice ability there and i think this loom boss on a giant cave squid is one of the best looking leaders he's really cool and that cave squig's a great miniature and a great skull but I think there's another model called a Loon Boss on Mangler Squid, uh, Squig, and he doesn't have his own fighter card, and the Mangler Squig doesn't have a fighter card either. So I think if you've got this miniature already, this is something that you could certainly proxy for the Loon Boss on Giant Cave Squig as well. Our next leader is a Loon Boss, and this one's a lot less now on the points. This is 175 points, and we can see we've got the leader rune mark and another rune mark that we haven't seen yet so we'll find out what that leader ability is going to be and this loom boss has got movement of four toughness four can take 18 wounds and with the weapon this kind of almost like psi kind of weapon it's got a weapon range of two can make four attacks strength four dealing two to four on a crit so for 175 points we're not going to get a huge amount here but it's this ability that's going to be specific to the loom boss so let's have a look at that now and see what that brings to the warband. Okay, so the loom boss already gets the triple stab him good, but now he gets the quad, I'm the boss, now stab him good. Until the end of the battle round, add the value of this ability to the attacks characteristic of attack actions that have a range characteristic of three or less made by friendly fighters while they are within six inches of this fighter. So this is a huge ability. As long as there's friendly fighters within six inches of this fighter, don't have to be visible just as long as they are within that distance then you can add the value of the ability to their attack characteristic so if you're getting a five or six you know that's huge that's to every fighter that's within six inches of the leader so this quad is awesome and i think just for this ability alone would be well worth getting a loom boss in your warband next we've got a fungoid cave shaman and this is a great sculpt again loads of detail lots going on with this with all the weird creatures around him so this is an awesome model and would make a real fun leader for sure and for 175 points you're getting a movement of four a little bit lower on toughness with a toughness three can take 18 wounds we've got the leader rune mark and the mystic rune mark so there's going to be an ability we haven't seen yet and then we get because he's got this mystic rune mark this shaman has got two weapon abilities so his first weapon is a range of three to seven minimum three maximum seven can make two attacks strength three dealing three to six on a crit and if you get up close he's got a weapon range of one making three attacks strength four 
dealing one to four on a crit. So this is pretty standard for this kind of kind of shaman, mystic, magical figure. Um, but it's the ability that I think we want to have a look at and see what's going to be good for this cave shaman. But he's not the only shaman available for the gloom spike gits. You can also get these madcap shaman, not markup, madcap shaman. Um, and they're only £10 for these two models. So if you wanted to proxy them, I think this would be a cheaper way of getting some models on the table and in your warband. But let's go back to the abilities then. And so for this leader, again, he's going to get the stab him good on a triple. But for specific to this guy, he's going to get the triple magic spore moors. Roll a dice for each visible enemy fighter within three inches of this fighter. On a three to four, allocate one damage point to that fighter being rolled for. On a five to six, allocate a number of damage points to the fighter being rolled for equal to the value of this ability. So this is a pretty decent ability. Uh, it reminds me a little bit of the Immolator from the Signs of the Flame. And so you really want need to be getting fives or sixes, though, for this to have an effect. But, you know, it's with each visible enemy fighter within three inches, you do get a chance of injuring them. So if he's surrounded, this could be a good ability to take out a number of players. Our next leader is called a Scuttle Boss. And this is an awesome looking miniature on this kind of spider riding it. This is brilliant. And for 220 points, you're going to get a movement of 10, toughness 4, and can take 26 wounds. We're going to get the leader room mark and one other room mark. Again, we haven't seen this one yet, so this is really good. And then for the weapon, he's got a spear. So this is going to be a weapon range of 2, making 3 attacks, strength 4, dealing 2 to 4 on a crit. So not a huge amount there that he can put out in damage for 220 points you might expect a bit more but he's got a nice uh, like distance there he can travel with 10 so that's not bad and can take a fair number of wounds at 26 um, but let's have a look at his ability and see if that makes up for the points somehow and we know for the leader he's going to get that triple stab him good so this new ability is going to come up in the gloom spike gets fighter abilities and it's a triple called spider bite Pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter and roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. For each two to five, allocate one damage point to that fighter. For each six, allocate three damage points to that fighter. So this is very similar to the triple magic spore moors we just saw with the previous leader, the fungoid cave shaman. Um, but I think this one, you're not going to be dealing as much damage. So for a triple, this is lacking quite a little bit. But you have got more chance of doing at least one damage. But, you know, to get sixes to do three to that fighter, then, you know, you really need to get a bit more lucky, I think. But and again, it's visible enemy fighters within and, and they've got to be within one inch. So I'd say this is certainly not as good as that triple magic small uh, spore moors. There's a lot of a lot of differences here. And I think to have this as your leader. I think he might be better to bring in as a hero figure if you wanted a cool model rather than having him as your main leader. Because I don't think that ability is quite as good as the others. Our next leader is a web spinner shaman. And I couldn't find this model. It took me a little while to find out where, where you get him from. But he comes from the Arachnak, Arachnarak spider. And there's some different variations and models included that you can put on that spider. And so you can see he's there riding on the top at the front. And so you can have an option to build him separately of red. I had a look online on Reddit and apparently you can build him as a separate model away from this spider. So if you did that, you could include him as your leader. And then he's going to come out at 150 points with a movement four. He's going to have a toughness three and take 16 wounds. He's got the leader room mark and the flame and skull room mark. So that's another ability we haven't seen yet. And as a shaman, he's going to have that mystical kind of weapon. So it's three to seven. Uh, making two attacks, strength three, dealing three to six on a crit. Then if you get up close, it's uh, weapon range one, three attacks, strength three, dealing one to four on a crit. So very low for uh, a leader, and he's going to be one of the lowest leaders. Him and the Moon Clan boss are the lowest point leaders for your Gloom Spike gits. But he's going to get that leader ability, so let's take a look at that now. So as a leader, he gets the triple stab him good, but now he's also going to get a double called Speed of the Spider God. Until the end of the battle round, add one to the move characteristic of friendly fighters with the destroyer rune mark that are within six inches of this fighter when this fighter 
uses this ability. So this is one of those abilities where you have to use them with certain fighters. And so as we work through, you'll see that these are going to come up with the other kind of spider riders. So if you wanted to put together a little warband with a scuttle boss and some spider riders or a web spinner shaman, this would be like pretty fun and a good ability to use for that. So, you know, you could if you had the say, for instance, the scuttle boss as a hero and your web spinner shaman or vice versa, then you could make those two work together. And they can also work with the spider riders that we'll see a little bit later on. And here's one of those, but this is the spider rider boss. So we're still on the leaders. I mean, there's nine leaders you can choose all together. So loads of options. And um, this guy is 220 points. He's got a movement of 10 as he scuttles around on those spiders. He's got a toughness four, can take 22 damage. We've got the leader room mark and we've got that destroyer room mark. So we know he can link up with the web spinner shaman there. And he's got two options for weapons. He's got a range weapon, which is a minimum three, maximum 12. And he can make three attacks, strength three, dealing one to three on a crit. And he's also got the spear with a weapon range two, three attacks, strength three, dealing two to four on a crit. So for 220 points, you're not getting a lot here. He's not going to do a lot of damage. He's got a fair bit of distance he can travel, though. Take He's a bit tough and he can take some, some damage. But when we're starting to use those abilities we've seen earlier on, like the I'm the boss, now stab him good, that quad, then that could be quite useful. But... Are these ones with that long range going to be close enough to the, to the leader to use them? So it's just kind of working that into your tactics as you build your warband. And no extra abilities here. We know he can use that triple stab him good. And he's also got the destroyer room mark so he can link up with the shaman. And then he gets the backstabbing mob, spider bite and sneaky stab that we've seen already. OK, now let's move on to the moon clam boss. And this is another one at 150 points. Um, for those points, we're going to get a movement four, toughness four, can take 16 wounds. We've only got that leader rune mark, and he's going to have a weapon range of one, making four attacks, strength four, dealing two to four on a crit. So for 150 points, this is our lowest leader, but he's not getting a lot here. You know, that damage output's not going to be great, and, you know, he hasn't really got much movement. So I would say for 150 points, I wouldn't choose this as the leader. But it could be an option if you've got one pack of um, stabbers and you want to just run with a little kind of mini warband built up of that set. Then it could work for sure. And that leader ability, we've seen the triple stab him good. And with the fighter abilities, that's all he's going to get. And now we're on to our squig hopper boss. And this is a great model again. I really love the squig hoppers. I've got to get some of these. And this guy's coming in at 250 points. So quite high now. We're getting up to real high points for this leader. And he's got movement 10, toughness 4, and can take 22 wounds. He's got the leader rune mark. He's got a rune mark for a fighter ability that we've seen. And he's also got the rune mark that shows us he can fly. He's got a weapon range of 1, making 5 attacks, strength 5, dealing two to four on a crit. So these are some great stats for 250. I think having that flight, that distance and that amount of damage to put out is really great. And if you can team this up with a loom boss on a giant cave squig, I think you could have some real good fun with this. And using those abilities, they're going to be close together, potentially really dishing out some damage. So if you can use that quad leadership on him, he's going to put out a lot of damage. So maybe picking him as a hero would be a good option. But for his abilities, he's going to get that triple stab him good. And then the three we've already seen, the same fighter abilities that our loom boss on giant cave squid had. Now we're on to our final leader, the bounder boss. And this is going to be quite similar to the one we've just seen. But for a few more points, this is 265 points. The movement is eight, so a bit less. But he's tougher at toughness five. Can take more wounds at 24. He's got the same room marks, the leader room mark and the two others. So we know he can fly as well. His weapon range now is two because he's got a spear instead. He can make four attacks, strength five, dealing two to five on a crit. So less attacks, but he can put more damage output on that crit. So for an extra 15 points, you know, you could have potentially more damage here. And so if you can again use that with the quad ability and use this guy as maybe a hero, that could be a good way to go with your tactics. But if you use him as a leader, he's going to get that triple stab him good. And he's also going to get the three fighter abilities we've already seen. So that sums up all the leaders. So now let's move on and take a look at the fighters available to us for the Gloom Spike Gits. And let's start with their fighter abilities, which we've already seen, the backstabbing mob 
and Sneaky Stab. So we won't go through those again. But let's get started with the Spider Riders. And they're coming in at 150 points each. And for that 150 points, you get a movement 10. Toughness 4, taking 16 wounds. They've got one rune mark. That's the Destroyer rune mark. So we know that'll work with that Shaman, that Web Spinner Shaman. And they've got two weapons. The range weapon, minimum 3, maximum 12. Making two attacks, strength 3, dealing 1 to 3 on a crit. And then they've also got the spear, which is a range of two, making two attacks, strength three, dealing one to four on a crit. So for 150 points, we're getting a fair amount of wounds they can take. That distance is very useful. Their damage output's not great at all, but you want to be using them with the web spinner shaman for sure. So including them together in the warband, I think, is the way to go for these. And they just look great, really great, interesting miniatures. And within this set, if you bought this on Games Workshop, you're also going to get an option to make one of them the Spider Rider boss. So you could potentially build a warband just with that one set. So that's one way you could get going quite quickly. But abilities for these, they get the usual fighter ones, plus this triple Spider Bite that we've already seen as well. And now we're on to the Sneaky Snufflers. And I really like these. I think these are great set. And I'm, I'm really going to try and pick up maybe a set of them or even half a set on eBay because these look really cool. But for 85 points, you're going to get a movement 4. Toughness 3. They can take 15 wounds. They can have a weapon range of 1. Making 3 attacks. Strength 3. Dealing 2 to 4 on a crit. So for 85 points, I think that's pretty good being able to take 15 wounds. Um, again, they're not high powers. You're not going to do a lot of damage with these. But I think they'd be fun to include in the warband. And if you like the look of them like I do, then I think they're definitely going to be a good addition just for the look of them and I think you know having that 15 wounds is quite good too. No extra special abilities for the sneaky slufflers but they're going to get those fighter abilities that we've already seen before so that covers them. Now let's move on to the next fighters which are the stabber with stabber and moon shield and at 70 points you're going to get a movement four, you're going to get a toughness four and they're going to take eight wounds. They've got a weapon range of one making three attacks, strength three, dealing one to three on a crit so you know these guys aren't bad really toughness wise for a four but other than that it's pretty much what we'd expect to see for 70 points and then again their abilities they're just going to get the two standard fighter abilities uh, no extra special ones for these and these are really kind of your chaff units to throw in and very similar to them we've got the stabber with poking spear and moon shield again 70 points we've got a movement four they can have a toughness four because they've got that shield and they can take eight wounds. They've got a little bit extended weapon range. So they've got a range of two, but now can only make two attacks. Strength three, dealing one to four on a crit. So another chaff unit that we want to throw in there. And again, they're just going to get those two abilities, no extra special ones. So for 70 points, it's pretty much as standard. Then we've also got the stabber with barbed net. Very low now at 45 points. Movement four. Toughness 3 can take 8 wounds. They've got a weapon range of 1, making 3 attacks, strength 3, dealing 1 to 2 on a crit. So these guys really aren't going to do pretty much any damage at all um, for 45 points. You wouldn't expect that anyway. You know, movement and toughness is standard. But it's this ability that I think would be a good reason to include them in your warband. And for 45 points, to get an ability isn't bad. And this one is called a double called barbed net and here they pick a visible enemy fighter within three inch of this fighter and roll a dice on a three plus until the end of the battle round that fighter cannot make move actions or disengage actions so for 45 points to get an ability like this on a double where they only have to roll a three plus they can really tie up some of the enemy fighters and they can actually stop them from moving and disengaging so that's pretty handy i think having one or two of these in the warband wouldn't be a bad thing at all next we've got our shooters and these are coming in at 65 points with a movement four toughness three and it can take eight wounds we've got two weapon options here so we've got the first one that range weapon minimum three maximum 12 making two attacks strength three dealing one to three on a crit then we've got the knife if they come up close with a weapon range of one making three attacks, strength three, dealing one to two on a crit. So for 65 points, the damage output's terrible. You're not making that many attacks, but it's so low. I think that's what you would expect for that amount of point. No extra abilities, just the basic fighter abilities too. 
Now we're on to the cave squig. And for me, this is what the gloom spike gits are all about. I love this set of cave squigs with their herders. And so the cave squigs, now we're getting really tough and strong. Uh, 140 points. They've got the beast room mark. They've got a movement four. Toughness four. Can take 15 wounds. They're biting you. So they're going to have a range of one, making four attacks. Strength five dealing two to four on a crit. So these guys are pretty serious. They're not messing around. They can make many attacks, high strength, high damage output. I think these guys are brilliant, but you've got to control them somehow. And for that, we need our cave herder. And these are going to come in at 45 points and they're going to get a movement of four, toughness three, and they can take eight wounds. They've got a weapon range of one and they can make three attacks, strength three, dealing one to two on a crit. So terrible stats as you would expect for 45 points, but it's this ability that we really want to see. And it's this ability that you can use to make the most of your cave squigs. So you've got to have a, a squig herder or two on the warband, I think, to make this really fun and make it work. Also build into the narrative. They are either poking them or tempting them along with mushrooms. Um, so with the squig herder, we're going to get this ability called triple go that way. Pick a friendly fighter with a beast rune mark within four inches of this fighter. That fighter makes a bonus move action. So this is really cool. You know, you've got four inches that you can be within the beast. So get close enough to those cave squigs where you can keep yourself out of distance, use your triple, and then that fighter can make a bonus move action. So if you want to push your cave squigs right onto the enemy, drive them forward, then you can just pick one friendly fighter with that beast room mark and really make them go forward. So having that prong or the mushrooms to tempt them along, that's how you get that extra movement out of them. So really great use of those with the cave squigs. But we've also got squig hoppers that we can bring on. These are awesome too at 200 points. So a bit higher again. And they've got a, a distance of 10. Toughness of 4 can take 16 wounds. They've got a flight room mark and a room mark we've already seen for an ability. They've got one weapon, which is a range of 1, making 4 attacks. Strength 5, dealing 2 to 4 on a crit so for 200 points we're getting the kind of same damage output as we would expect from the squigs but with these guys they can fly and their movement's really great and another similar one is called a boingot or boing rot bounder and they're a little bit more 220 points now so it's going up a little bit now all the time but they've got a little bit less they can move at eight but they're tougher so they've got toughness five can take 18 wounds the same room marks their weapon range is now two. They can make three attacks instead of four. Toughness is five and they can put out two to five damage and that'll be two on a hit, five on a critical hit. And so these guys are very similar to the squig hoppers. You can build them from the same set and they're also going to get the same ability, the triple boing, boing, boing that we saw on the loom boss giant cave squig too. So now that covers the main leaders and the main fighters, let's have a look at the warband I'm putting together. And so I'm going for something really cool here. I'm taking a set called Zarbag's Gits. And if you haven't seen this, these are the miniatures that came in the Underworld set. But you can still buy them on like eBay and things like that for Underworlds. But you can also pick them up without the cards as a separate model set. And it's really great value because you get some cave squigs you get some herders you get some you can use as a shaman you've got shooters you've got a netter and so you've got a real nice choice and these would be 15 pounds rrp on these and what i've done is i've combined that zarbag's git set with a squig herd and i was able to get a great discount at element games for the squig herd bringing the price right down on those and so with these combined i've got enough to do probably two warbands of a thousand points each so i think that's really great but it also gives me that extra should i want to build them up to 1400 um but i'd really like to add one of these two i love this um this guy here the one on the right the loom boss on the giant cave squig i think he's awesome but i also like the boss with the cave squig that doesn't come with a card but you've got tons of options you could even pick up the start collecting set and start using some of these big guys at the back um but we haven't gone through those yet and there's also some models that don't really fit in and don't come with any cards and so these mangler squids don't really fit in um there's nowhere i can really find to use those so we'd have to make their own and also this loon boss with giant cave squig i think you'd have to proxy him as maybe the loon boss on one but it might not look right 
Also the Loon Shrine, you can't really use that, but would be great terrain for the tabletop. And the Endless Spells, maybe a scatter terrain or use it as deadly terrain, that'd be quite fun. Then we've also got Molog's Mob, who I think you could really make some good use of. But we'll cover the stats for Molog that we could use him in Models to Come in Part 2. And in Part 2, we're going to go through the Goba Palooza, which have got their own unique abilities and fighter cards. This is an awesome looking set. We've also got the Arachnorok that we can use as a monster. So if we want to bring in a big monster into our campaign warband, that would be really fun. We can also add in some Felwater Trogoths as, as like a thrall. And these amazing rock gut Trogoths too, we can bring in them. And then there's also these two big guys, the Dankhold Trogoth, and there's some options for using them as a monster as well. So there's quite a lot to cover there, and I'll go through all of these in part two with their fighter cards and abilities, and then we'll look at some campaign warbands. I think the Gloom Spike gits are awesome, great miniatures, great sculpts, real character, and I love their narrative and everything about them. But I'd love to hear what you think about the Gloom Spike gits. Do you play them already? Maybe Age of Sigma, you've got an army. So which models would you like to bring in to your warband? Who would be your favourite leader? It'd be great to hear what you think. And I'll put links to uh, all the different sets and things to Element Games in the description below. And that'll be an affiliate link. But it won't cost you anything extra. In fact, you can save up to 20% there on all your game products. And for every sale made, I get a small commission. And that helps me do loads more videos like this. So thanks so much for that support. It's really awesome. And I really appreciate it. If you like this kind of content and would like to support the channel, then please check out my Patreon page. And thanks to everyone who's joined so far. It's really awesome. We hang out on Discord, talk about the hobby, share ideas and help each other out. And you'll get some perks there that you're not going to find anywhere else. So I'll put a link in the description and it'll be great to see you there. I hope you enjoyed the video and this gave you a good insight into the huge amount of miniatures that you can use for the Gloom Spike Gits. But come and join me in part two, because we're not done yet. There's so many more. The Goba Palooza, these big guys, there's loads you can include. So thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it. Subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. <laughs>